it's Emily bringing you another Grass River micro class. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about seed dispersal um, or plants spreading their seeds, which is something that a lot of the plants um, in this region of the world are getting ready to do or are in the process of already doing right now. Um, and so the first question is why do plants even disperse their seeds or spread their seeds anyway? Why do they come up with these elaborate adaptations for their seeds to travel great distances? The reason is that they're trying to reduce competition between those new seed, those plants that the seeds will become, the new plants, and the parent plant, right? Because if they're just dropped right where, right below the parent plant, you know, there might not be as many nutrients, as much water, they might get shaded out, there won't be light. So they want to reduce competition between the new seedlings and the parent plant. And then the other reason um, is that when plants are packed really closely together, it can also cause um, disease to spread really rapidly through the population. So spreading out their seeds is a great way to avoid those two complications. So we'll talk about three main ways that plants disperse their seeds today. First way is via wind, which is maybe the most common. Second is via animals, and there are a couple different pathways that can take that we'll talk about. And the third is via ballistics. Um, so let's go see what we can find out here at Grass River. All right, so let's talk about wind dispersed seeds first. So here we have a burst pod of common milkweed and these seeds have, are attached to nice fluffy parachutes. Um, and these seeds are really light and very small and that makes sense because if they're being traveled on the wind, you wouldn't want to be really heavy, you wouldn't go very far. Um, but because they're really small and light, that means that the endosperm, which is the part of the seed that actually um, contains the nutrients for the growing plant that surrounds the embryo, the little baby plant, um, the, the endosperm is very small. So they have very limited nutrients that they carry with them. Um, so to make up for that, the plant produces tons of seeds um, with the hopes, you know, that since it doesn't have a very good chance of making it, um, becoming established um, to make up for the, the low chance per um, seed. And also they have a low chance because they're just being spread by the wind, right? Um, there's no guarantee where it will land, if that site will even be any, in any way conducive to um, germination. You know, it could land in a lake or something. Um, so yeah, to make up for that, the plant produces tons of seeds. Um, and other plants that do this, obviously the really familiar um, dandelion. Um, which its seeds can travel up to 500 miles, by the way, over 500 miles, which is amazing. Um, but also asters, thistles, um, and then this group of plants not only includes these parachute type guys, but also um, plants with winged seeds. So like maples, um, which have their winged helicopters, but I like the technical term is Samara, but I like the term helicopter better. Um, and also ash trees and basswoods have winged seeds. Um, and the purpose of those wings is just to um, slow the plant's descent to the ground so that it can hopefully be blown, ab blown about by the wind and travel some distance. And they, they can, maple seeds can travel up to 180 meters away from the parent plant. So that's not too shabby. That's almost two football field lengths. Um, yeah, so that is wind dispersed seeds. All right, so now let's talk about seeds that are dispersed by animals. So I think the best way to pl best place to start with that is by talking about fruit. Because fruit, like wild blueberries or something, did not evolve in order to satisfy our taste buds. I know, crazy. Um, but instead, it evolved in order to assist the plant in dispersing its seeds. Because obviously fruit is attractive to animals. Um, and if the seeds are encased in the fruit and the animal eats the fruit and then it travels a ways with the seeds in its gut, assuming the seeds don't get destroyed by the digestive enzymes and acids, um, then the seed gets, the seeds can get pooped out at a different place um, that could be very far away from the parent plant. And the best part is that the seeds are then deposited in a pile of perfect fertilizer for germination. So it's actually really cool. The animals get 
um, a meal in the, in the fruit and then the plant gets a great seed dispersal. So it's a great example of a mutualism. Um, so we're looking at um, rose hips right now of the swamp rose. Um, but lots of fruit is starting to ripen right now. These guys, um, fruit of things like false Solomon seal, um, lots of dogwood berries are ripening, um, and jack in the pulpits too, which are gorgeous. And um, animals that will eat these are like fruit eating birds, like wax wings um, or certain thrushes. Um, but also things like deer and bears and turkeys too, for sure, grouse, that sort of thing. Um, so lots of animals rely on these and I should say that fruit is not the only way that seeds that plants um, entice animals to carry the seeds around um, Nuts are another way um, and nuts work by basically they're the actual seed um, And so a lot of times squirrels will take the nuts and go and cache them or bury them um, someplace and oftentimes they forget about them or you know a certain percentage of the ones that they cache for the winter and then the seeds are already buried um, which is great for the for the plant um, great um, chance of germination um, with that then some other ways that animals disperse seeds um, are as anybody knows who's been hiking and gotten burrs stuck all over to their pants um, Seeds that have hooks or burrs are great for being able to hook onto animal fur or even our pants or shoes and be dispersed that way where they fall off later. So, so plants definitely take advantage of animals moving around in the environment um, in order to disperse their seeds. A one more neat way that animals disperse seeds that you might not know about is um, some seeds, especially spring wildflowers like bloodroot, trilliums, violets, have what's called an eliasome attached to their seed, which is just like a little fatty tidbit. Um, and ants love them and ants take the seeds and that's what the eliasomes have evolved. You know, that's why they evolved is for in, in co-evolution with ants so that ants take the seeds back to their little nest or burrow. Um, they take them underground, they store them in their food storage chamber, um, and then they eat the little eliasome, but then they just leave the seed, um, which is now underground. Perfect germination site. Um, so that's a really neat um, mutualism too. All right, so now on to the fun part, ballistics. Okay, so this is a jewelweed plant, and I talked about this maybe last week or the week before in my late sum wetland um, summer wildflowers um, class, but I wanna do it again because I didn't really talk about how the seed dispersal method works. So we've got these nice pods um, that the seeds develop in, and when the seeds are fully developed, like this pod looks like it's almost about to pop, um, the pod splits and the seed has spring mechanisms inside it that literally spray the seeds um, up to 10 feet away from the plant. Um, so the plant's other common name is touch me not um, and it's for this reason because the plant can explode, um, literally the pods explode if they're ready um, if you just brush up against it. So let's try this one. Uh, that one wasn't quite ready, didn't really give a great explosion. Maybe this one down here will be better. But these don't look like they're quite ready yet. Yeah, that one's not quite ready. Um, but you can start to see the little spring mechanism in there. Um, yeah, so this wasn't the greatest example of those ballistics, um, but a plant that does this, um, Another plant that does this that we have around here is witch hazel. Um, it's a shrub and those seeds will um, be ready to pop out of their capsules um, come mid-October. So thanks for following along on this Grass River micro class as we talked about some of the more common ways that plants disperse their seeds. There are other ways of course too, like via water, like coconuts, and so the seeds are very buoyant. Um, and also some seeds, um, some plants wait to disperse their seeds um, until a fire comes through and the cones, this is um, the case with jack pine, 
the cones are sealed with the resin and the resin only melts and then the cone releases the seeds um, when there's a hot enough fire that comes through that it will kill the adult trees. Um, and so then the seeds will drop and they'll be able to um, sprout in a place that they won't have any competition. And also ash is really um, a great soil enricher too. All right, that's all I have for you guys this week. Stay tuned next week. I'll see you then. Bye.